haven't made videos in such a long time, but we're going to pick it up where we left off in chapter 6. And we're doing structural analysis and we're doing fundamentals uh, problem 6 9. So, the last video, um, we're going to follow the same exact procedure, just in different section. Okay, we're doing method of sections for the trusses. Um, so, in the trusses, like I mentioned in the previous videos, uh, you want to know what they're asking for, right? So, they're saying determine the force in members KJ, KD, and CD. All right. So you want to make the cut at those uh, at those um, trusses. Okay. So KJ, KD, and CD are located. So you have KJ over here, uh, KD, and CD. All right. So you want to make the cut uh, right here. Okay. But we're not going to go there yet, all right? Uh, if you're just jumping into this video, you might not know the, the external forces that are acting on this truss. So that's the first thing you want to do. So what we're going to do is just say, okay, forces in the x direction equals zero, and forces in the y direction equals zero, okay? Let's shrink this a bit. All right, so what are the forces acting in the x direction? Well, first, let's see. At joint A, all right, so this is a, 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 a pin, right? So you have a reaction AY and a reaction AX. Over here at G, you have a roller or a rocker, right? So you only have a, direction, a, rea a reaction in the y direction, so you have GY. All right, so in the x direction, we have AX equals to zero. All right, so you already found one uh, reaction. Uh, in the y direction, we have AY plus GY, and then we have minus 20, minus 30, and then minus 40, okay, equals zero, right? So it's telling you that AY plus GY um, equals 90 kilonewtons, right? So we're left off trying to figure out what AY and GY are, okay? So in order to do that, best thing to do is just take a moment about A. Uh, that'll be a good approach. So let's take a moment about A. All right, so we're gonna, you wanna put your finger down on your paper and hold it at A and then just find the direction of each moment, right? So just with your finger, just push down on B in that direction, and it should make your whole page rotate clockwise, right? So that's gonna be the negative moment, and if GY is gonna push it up, that's gonna rotate it in the counterclockwise direction, which is positive, right? So you're gonna have minus 20 times the distance, times the distance of two meters, right? Um, then you have what is it? Uh, minus 30 times 4, and then minus 40 uh, times 6. Okay. And last but not least, you have the GY moment. So plus GY uh, times uh, 12 equals 0. Right. And after you calculate all this, you should get a GY of 30. 3.3. Uh, Let's just leave it as 0.3. All right. This problem does not give you nice round numbers. That's for sure. So you have GY. Okay. And then just plug it back into AY. Right. And then we can find out what AY is. Sorry. Plug it into GY, and then we'll find out what AY is, which will be 56.6. All right. Or let's say 0.7. Kilonewtons. All right. Remember, this is the first thing you want to do when you have one of these trusses, right? Find the reactions first. So find the external forces acting on this, the whole structure, and then begin to find the internal forces, which is all what we'll be doing next. So, like I said, our our goal is to find KJ, KD, and CD. All right, and whether it's in tension or compression. So we made the cut at this red line. Okay. And 
you want to isolate uh, if you want to isolate oh gosh that raises the image you can isolate the whole left side of the truss or the whole right side usually pick the side that's more convenient sometimes or just the side that I'm more comfortable with right um, in this case I'm just gonna pick uh, the left side okay so you want to draw what we'll have left is a truss like this right and then you have anything that's acting on it still so you have your 20 kilonewtons you have your 30 kilonewtons over here ay we said was 56 0.7 okay there's no a there's no ax okay and then last but not least uh the the cut up joints or the cut up trusses right so i'm going to draw them all in tension which means i'm going to draw them all away so this is kj this would be kd and over here cd okay and i notice that all these forces so sorry kd and cd they're going to end up like combining somewhere around here right so if you want to stretch it out because that'll be useful in a bit right so uh, let's see, this is L, K, B, C, and A. Alright. So now let's just get into the, the math. Alright. So with method of joints, sorry, method of sections, right? In the video, the prior video, I mentioned the best way to go about these is just take a, use the moment equation initially, right? Don't try to break all the angles down and everything like that. So the first thing we're going to do is just take a moment about a point that's convenient to us where we can eliminate as many forces. So in that case, we can take a moment about K. Okay, we do a moment about K over here, right? We can eliminate this 30 kilonewton force, the KD, KJ, okay? And, um, and then all we're left with is the 56.7, the 20 kilonewtons, and... Uh, CD. Alright, so three forces. So let's do that. So K equals zero. Alright, so that'll give us minus 56.7. Right, so this force times this distance, which is two. Alright, plus CD. Right, and what's that distance going to be? It's going to be this distance, right? So that's times three, and then plus twenty times two. Okay, that's all equal to zero, right? So it's in static equilibrium, it's not rotating, right? So this will end up giving us CD is fifty-five. Uh, let's just round up. So fifty-five point six kilonewtons and because our result was positive all right so you know it didn't they have a little negative here right because of that we assume the direction of tension is correct all right so because we didn't have a negative there we assume correctly that this truss cd is in tension okay so we have this now let's move on to uh, calculating KJ and KD. So for um, for KJ, okay. So for this truss over here to figure that one out, we're gonna use the I would say the ghost point. Okay. So we know that CD and KD combine at this point over here. It's not on the diagram, but we do know the distance of all the forces to that point. Okay, so you know, we know that's two meters. All right, there's a useful trick just because we can eliminate, again, we can eliminate these two forces that are coinciding at that one point. So let's do a moment about um, D equals zero. 
All right? So by doing that, we're going to take KJ, right? So KJ is going to be, uh, he wants to pull it in this direction, right? So clockwise, so minus KJ times 3 minus 56.7 times 6, okay? Plus 20 times 4, all right? So we have, remember that all these are 2 meters apart. And meters, okay? So yeah, so this was negative because clockwise, this one's pulling it counterclockwise, so positive 20 times 4, uh, plus 30 times 2, okay? And that's it. And then CD and KD don't cause any moment, they're just pushing on that joint, equals 0, right? Uh, solving this, so I'm doing all the little algebra, we get KJ to be minus 66. 0.7 kilonewtons. And like I said before, our result from this equation uh, gave us a negative number, okay? Which means our assumption that it was in tension is incorrect and it's actually in compression, okay? So in your homework, if you want to turn, when you turn them in, you want to just correct it and say 66.7 kilonewtons in compression. Make your professor happy. All right, last but not least, KD is always the most problematic, okay, the diagonal ones. So with this one, you will have to find that angle, okay? But you know everything's given to you already because you're given, if you look at the diagram, you're given um, the distance between KC is 3, between CD is 2, right? So you can just do an inverse tangent. So you can do phi is the inverse tan of Toa, right? Opposite over adjacent. So 3 over 2. Alright. And then solving this, we'll get like roughly 56.3 degrees. Okay. And now for the final, final touch. Okay. We're just going to take a, either x, like, you know, forces in the x direction or forces in the y direction. Okay. That'll be completely up to uh, to you guys. Let's do uh, forces in the Y just to make it more painful for you guys. Okay. All right. Forces in the X direction. We only have we have CD, KJ, and the X component of KD. Okay. Forces in the Y. We have 56, 20, 30, and the Y component of KD. All right. So we're gonna have plus 56.7 minus 20 minus 30 and then minus the y component of kd so minus k d all right and now here we're gonna have to figure out what angle we're gonna use so if this 56.3 over here right we know that this one uh, is 30 3, 33.7-ish, uh, let's say, okay, so we can say cosine 33.7, right, so we can say KD cosine 33.7, okay, if we use the phi angle, right, so we use the complementary of the 56.3, if we use phi, you can say it is the sine, okay? So we sine uh, 56.3. All right, and then all of this equals zero, right? So then when we isolate KD, right, it, it should give us a positive value of 8.02, or let's just say eight kilonewtons, right? And because it's positive, we know it is in tension. All right. And that's it for this example. So basically, don't just take a random section of anything and make a cut through it, right? You want to cut through what they're asking you for. All right. Nice. And if you also, 
this is a new style I'm just gonna be using white uh, white background for now on if you guys like this style just let me know in the comments um, also I'm gonna try to catch up with mechanics of materials and some dynamics so uh, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video